forgiveness can be incredibly difficult. But you know what? Not forgiving is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to get hurt or die. I know. I know how it feels. Sometimes the hurt is very deep, you know, like when our spouse, when a spouse or a parent betrays our trust or when we are victims of, of crime or, or when we've been harshly bullied. I know. Welcome to my YouTube channel, the best place for go-getters, dreamers, and achievers. My name is Miriam Adekwajo and I'm based here in California. And if you follow me on Instagram, I share daily reminders that will help us right on track and help us become better version of ourselves. I drop two videos every week, Mondays and Wednesdays. So please, if you're new on this channel, kind, kindly hit on the subscribe button and leave your comments below. If you're a returning subscriber, you are the real MVP and you inspire me to make these videos every single time. Just so you know <laughs> today i'll be sharing eight keys to forgiveness come with me let's go <laughs> so when our inner world is badly disrupted it's difficult to concentrate on anything other than that turmoil or pain and when we hold on to hurt we're emotionally and cognit cognitively hobbled and our relationships suffer and guess what Forgiveness is the only solution to this. Forgiveness is strong medicine to this. And when life hits us hard, there's nothing as effective as forgiveness for healing deep wounds. So I would not have spent the last 30 years of my life studying forgiveness if I were not convinced of this. Many people have misconceptions about what forgiveness really means. Others may want to forgive, but wonder whether or not they truly can. You know, forgiveness does not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily come easy, but it's possible for many of us to achieve if we have the right tools and we are willing to put in the effort to forgive. So today I'll be sharing the basic steps involved in following a path of forgiveness. Number one, know what forgiveness is and why it matters. Forgiveness is about goodness. It's about extending mercy to those who have harmed us, even if they don't deserve it. It's not about finding excuses for the offending person's behavior, pretending that it doesn't happen or it didn't happen, nor is there a quick formula that you can follow. But I want you to know that forgiveness is a process with many steps that often proceeds in a non-linear fashion. Yes, I've been there before. So I know what it feels like especially from someone that you love so much and trust but it's well worth the effort you know working on forgiveness can help us to increase our self-esteem and give us a sense of inner strength and safety which is true it can reverse the lies that we often tell ourselves when someone has hurt us deeply lies like i'm defeated or i'm not worthy forgiveness can heal us and allow us to move on in life with meaning and purpose forgiveness matters and we will all be its primary beneficiary studies have actually shown that forgiving other people have strong psychological benefits for the one who forgives it's been shown to decrease depression anxiety unhealthy anger and the symptoms of ptsd but we don't just forgive to help ourselves forgiveness can lead to psychological healing yes but in its essence it is not something about you or done for you it is something that you extend towards another person why because you recognize that over time it is the best response to the situation oh yes forgiveness number two become forgivingly fit to practice forgiveness it helps if you have worked on positively changing your inner world by learning to be what i call forgivingly fit in quotes just as you would start slowly with a new exercise routine it helps if you build your forgiving heart muscles slowly yes you have to build the muscles of forgiving <laughs> of forgiveness slowly you know incorporating those regular workouts into your everyday life now workout here is the forgiving it's being forgivingly fit you know what i mean now that you understand what i'm talking about you can start becoming more fit by making a commitment to do no harm in other words making a, a conscious effort not to talk disparagingly about those who have hurt you you don't have to say good things but you know if you refrain from talking negatively it will fit the more forgiving side of your mind and heart which is true you can also make a practice of recognizing 
of recognizing that every person is unique, special, and irreplaceable. And that's the truth. Yes. You may come to this through religious beliefs or humanist philosophy or even through your belief in evolution but it's important to cultivate this mindset of valuing our common humanity you know so that it becomes harder to discount someone who has harmed you as unworthy you can show love in small ways in everyday encounters like smiling at a cashier at the grocery store taking time to listen to a child giving love when it's unnecessary helps to build the love muscle making it easier to show compassion towards everyone and if you practice small acts of forgiveness and mercy extending care when someone harms you in everyday life this too will help maybe you can stop honking at someone in traffic like when they hung at you when somebody cuts off in front of you in traffic you may just don't don't you don't have to hung or you hold your tongue when your when your spouse snaps at you um, and extend the hug instead sometimes pride and power can weaken our efforts to forgive by making us feel entitled and inflated so that you hang on to your resentments as a noble cause Try to catch yourself when you are acting from that place. Choose forgiveness or mercy instead. Number three, address your inner pain. Yes. You know, it is important to figure out who has hurt you and how. It may seem obvious, but you know, every action that causes suffering is unjust. For example, you don't need to forgive your child or spouse, even if their imperfections are inconvenient for you. To become clearer, you can look carefully at the people in your life your parents, your siblings, your peers, your spouse, co-workers, children, and even yourself. And rate how much they have hurt you. Perhaps you have exercised power over you or withheld love, or maybe they have physically harmed you. And guess what? These hurts have contributed to your inner pain and need to be acknowledged. You realize that when you do this, it gives you an idea of forgiveness in your life, and it will provide a place to start. And there are many forms of emotional pain, you know, but the common forms are anxiety, depression, unhealthy anger, lack of trust, self-loathing or low self-esteem, yes, and an overall negative view of the world and a lack of confidence in one's ability to change. Trust me, all of these harms can be addressed by forgiveness and it's important to identify the kind of pain that you are suffering from and to acknowledge it because the more hurt you have incurred the more important it is to forgive at least the purpose of experiencing that emotional feeling that you crave for you may not be able to do this accounting on your own but you know you can actually talk to a therapist you know someone who can help you create some form of accountability but you know what However you choose to approach looking at your pain, just make sure that you do it in an environment that feels safe and supportive. So, number four, develop a forgiving mind through empathy. One thing I found out is that scientists have discovered what happens when we think of forgiving and I've discovered that when people successfully imagine forgiving someone in a hypothetical situation like you just imagine that you forgave someone it shows the increased ac activity in the neural circuits responsible for empathy it is connected to forgiveness and an important step in the process and if you examine some of the details in the life of the person who has harmed you you can see more clearly the kind of wound that the person actually carries and start to develop empathy for such people. I've mentioned earlier in my channel, on my YouTube channel, that people's um, attitude towards you is a reflection of who they are. Perhaps they are dealing with something, with, with emotional trauma, and then um, because they have not found a way to deal with it, they pretty much push it onto you. Like they exert the, the pressure on you. They hit you really hard and you are not responsible for what has happened to them, but they can't help it. You know, so by the time we begin to look at it from the point of view of um, those people needing help, you know, most of, you know, most people like that actually need help and that is why you have to look at them with empathy, you know. And like I said earlier, you know, if you examine some of the details in the life of the person who has harmed you, you can often see clearly what wounds that he, carry, that he carries and start to develop empathy for him. First, try to imagine him as a child, as an innocent child needing love and support. Did he get that from his parents? Research has shown that if an infant does not receive attention and love from primary caregiver, then he will have a weak attachment. It can damage trust and it may prevent him or her from ever getting close to others and set a trajectory of loneliness and conflict for the rest of his life. You may be able to put an entire narrative together for the person who hurt you. 
you may be able to see their physical frailties and psychological suffering and then begin to understand the common humanity that you share. You may recognize the person as someone who was wounded and is wounding someone else in return and is wounded you in return. <laughs> So despite whatever the person might have done to you, you realize that the person doesn't need to suffer. Recognizing that we all carry wounds in our hearts can help to open the door to forgiveness. Number five, find meaning in your suffering. When we suffer a great deal, it is important that we find meaning in what we have endured. Without seeing meaning, a person can lose a sense of purpose. Yeah, anyone can lose a sense of purpose, which can lead to hopelessness and despairing conclusion that there's no meaning to life itself. And it doesn't mean that we look for suffering in order to grow or try to find goodness in another person's bad actions. Instead, we try to see how our suffering has changed us in a positive way. Even as one suffers, it is possible to develop short term and sometimes long range goals in life. Some people begin to think of how they can use their sufferings to cope because they have become more resilient or brave. They may also realize that suffering has altered their perspective regarding what is important in life, changing their long range goals for themselves. To find meaning is not to diminish your pain or to say, I'll just make the best of it. All things happen for a reason and you must always take care to address the woundedness in yourself and to recognize the injustice of forgiveness or forgiveness will be shallow. Still, there are many ways to find meaning in our suffering. Some may choose to focus on the beauty of the world or decide to give service to others in need. Some may find meaning by speaking their truth or strengthening their inner resolve. If I were to give an answer, I would say we should use our suffering to become more loving and to pass that love to other people. Finding meaning in itself is helpful for finding direction in forgiveness. Yeah. So number six. Six. When forgiveness is hard, call upon other strengths. Yes. Yes, I know that forgiveness is always hard. It's always hard when we are dealing with deep injustices from other people. I have known people who have refused to use the word forgiveness because it, it, the word just makes them so angry and that's okay. We all have our timelines for when we can be merciful. But if we want to forgive and we are finding it hard, it might help to call upon other people, like other resources. And first things first, remember that, if you're struggling, remember that if you're struggling with forgiveness, it doesn't mean that you're a failure at forgiveness. Forgiveness is actually a process that takes time. It takes time, patience, and determination. Try not to be harsh on yourself, but be gentle and foster a sense of quiet within, an inner acceptance of yourself. Try to respond to yourself as someone whom you love deeply. Surround yourself with good and wise people who support you and who have the patience to allow you time to heal in your own way. Also, practice humility. Not in the sense of putting yourself down, but in realizing that we are all capable of imperfection and suffering. Try to develop courage and patience in yourself to help you in the journey. Also, if you practice bearing small slights against you without lashing out, you, you give a gift to everyone. Not only to the other person, but to everyone that that person may harm in future. Because of your anger, you can actually help to end the cycling of inflicting pains on other people through forgiving. Yes. And if you're still struggling or finding it hard to forgive people, you can practice with someone who is easier to forgive. Maybe someone who hurt you in a small way rather than deeply. Alternatively, it can be better to focus on forgiving the person who is at the root of your pain. Maybe a parent who was abusive or a spouse who betrayed you. If this initial hurt impacts other parts of your life and other relationships, it may be necessary to start there. Number seven, forgive yourself. Yes. Most of us tend to be harder on ourselves than we are on others and we struggle to love ourselves. If you're not feeling lovable because of actions that you have taken, you may need to work on yourself first. Work on your self-forgiveness and offer to yourself what you will offer to others who have hurt you. A sense of inherent worth despite your actions. Yes. In self-forgiveness, you honor yourself as a person even if you're imperfect. If you have broken your personal standards in a serious way, there's a danger of sliding into self-loathing. And when this happens, you may not take good care of yourself. You might overeat, oversleep, or start smoking or engaging in other forms of self-punishment. But you know what? You need to recognize this and move towards self-compassion. Soften your heart towards yourself. 
after you've been able to self-forgive, you also need to engage in seeking forgiveness from others when you whom you have armed and right the wrongs as best as you can. It is important to be prepared for the possibility that the other person may not be ready to forgive you and to practice patience and humility, like I said earlier. But a sincere apology, free of conditions and expectations will go a long way towards your receiving forgiveness in the end. Number eight, develop a forgiving heart. When we overcome suffering, we gain a more mature understanding of what it means to be humble, courageous, and loving in the world. We may be moved to create an atmosphere to create an atmosphere of forgiveness in our homes and workplaces to help other people who have been harmed to overcome their suffering or to protect their other I mean to protect our communities from a cycle of hatred and violence. All of these choices can lighten the heart and bring joy to one's life. Some people may believe that loving someone who has harmed you is impossible. Mm -mm. It is very possible, my brother, my sister. It is. But I found out that many people who forgive eventually find a way to open their hearts. If you shed bitterness and put love in its place and repeat this with many, many other people, you become free to love more widely and deeply. And this kind of transformation can create a legacy of love, which will leave one after you have long gone. And you know what? Next time you find yourself struggling to forgive, always remember that forgiving others releases you from anger and allow us to receive the healing that we need. Thank you so much for watching this video till the very end. If this video has blessed you, please click on the subscribe button and leave your comments below. I can't wait to read from you guys. Thank you so much. You're the real MVP and I see you guys. Thank you so much. So if someone has hurt you today, please find a place in your heart to forgive the person. Remember the Bible also teaches us that we should forgive others the way he has forgiven us. Thank you so much for watching this video till the very end. And if you're interested in joining my Facebook group, it's called Business Moguls. We help to inspire business people to take their business ideas and business to the next level. Feel free to invite your friends into my Facebook group. It's called Business Moguls. you find the link in the description below. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, keep being and keep